Welcome, good morning to our online service. It's really good to have you with us today. We're going to spend this time together reading God's word, worshipping God and reflecting on what he has to say to us today. So let's bow our heads as we come in worship. So as we come, let's pray together. We gather together to worship our loving, nurturing God who knows us intimately, loves us unconditionally, teaches us the new way we should go and comforts us in times of need. Praise be to God, the source and sustainer of life. Amen. We're going to sing together this song, Our Father Everlasting, and uh, this is recorded by Bessels Green Baptist Church. Let's sing together.
believe in life eternal I believe in the virgin birth I believe in the saints communion And in your holy church I believe in the resurrection When Jesus comes again For I believe in the name of Jesus For I believe in the name of Jesus Psalm 139 You have searched me, Lord, and you know me. You know when I sit and when I rise. You perceive my thoughts from afar. You discern my going out and my lying down. You're familiar with all my ways. Before word is on my tongue, you, Lord, know it completely. You hem me in behind and before, and you lay your hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me, too lofty for me to attain. Where can I go from your spirit? Where can I flee from your presence? If I go up to the heavens, you are there. If I make my bed in the depths, you are there. If I rise on the wings of the dawn, if I settle on the far side of the sea, even there your hand will guide me. Your right hand will hold me fast. If I say, surely the darkness will hide me and the light become night around me. Even the darkness will not be dark to you. The night will shine like day, for darkness is as light to you. For you created my innermost being. You knit me together in my mother's womb. I praise you because I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Your works are wonderful. I know that full well. My frame was not hidden from you when I was made in the secret place, when I was woven together in the depths of the earth. Your eyes saw my unformed body. All the days ordained for me were written in your book before one of them came to be. How precious to me are your thoughts, God. How vast is the sum of them. Were I to count them, they would outnumber the grains of sand. When I awake, I am still with you. If only you, God, would slay the wicked. Away from me, you who are bloodthirsty. They speak of you with evil intent. Your adversaries misuse your name. Do I not hate those who hate you, Lord? And abhor those who are in rebellion against you. I have nothing but hatred for them. I count them my enemies. Search me, God, and know my heart. Test me and know my anxious thoughts. See if there is any offensive way in me and lead me in the way everlasting. Throughout life, we hear some wonderful stories about prayer. I came across a story recently about a widow who had five children who every day came out to her front porch, raised their hands to heaven and prayed out loud, Lord, you know I have no food in my cabinets to feed my children today. Please provide for our daily needs. Her next door neighbour was an atheist who was sick and tired of hearing this spiritual talk every day. So one day he thought he'd teach her a lesson. He brought several bags of groceries and sat them on the front porch, rang the doorbell and hid in the bushes. The widow came out, saw the groceries and burst into joyful praise. Thank you, God. You've supplied my need. Thank you for answering my prayer. Bless the Lord, O my soul, she said. The atheist stepped out from behind the bush and arrogantly said, Mom, God doesn't answer your prayers. He doesn't provide for your needs. I did. See how foolish it is to trust in a non-existent God and give him credit for what he didn't do. Without taking a breath, the woman burst into another prayer. Dear God, you are so wonderful. You are not only providing food for my family today, but you got the devil to pay for it. Isn't that a wonderful prayer? I don't know about you, but I like listening to other people's prayers. You get to hear some wonderful prayers, don't you? The Bible, likewise, is full of some wonderful prayers as well. But it also contains some dangerous prayers. Psalm 139 that Tori's just read to us is one of those prayers. Because in this psalm are some words, part of a prayer, that if we pray it, is a dangerous prayer. But if we pray and we engage with it properly, we'll also draw us closer 
to God. In fact, these words in Psalm 139 are once described as the most dangerous prayer you could ever pray. I am, of course, referring to verses 23 and 24. Search me, O God, and know my heart. Test me and know my anxious thoughts. See if there is any offensive way in me and lead me in the way everlasting. Let's take a little bit of a closer look at those words this morning that David prayed. It starts with that phrase, search me, O God. At first, this request can sound quite straightforward. The truth is, you may have read these words before and be quite touched by them. Because the words at first sound like a good sort of prayer to pray. Search me, try me, test me. They're kind of asking God, do you know what, am I doing okay? Is maybe how we've read these words before. Now imagine this scenario for a moment. Imagine that uh, Maxine's doing the hoovering in our lounge. And she happens, and this is an imaginary scenario, To turn around to me, having done the hoovering, just to say to me, Steve, am I doing okay with my hoovering? What is she expecting? Maybe just that casual nod of approval. I have to point out, Maxine's never asked me whether I think she's doing well with the hoovering or the housework at home. This is an imaginary scenario. Truth is, David's request here in this prayer is far from that interpretation. This is more than just a passing request. I've got on this phone a torch. We use a torch to help us find things in the dark. We need a torch to help expose the things that we're looking for. And so to pray this prayer, Lord, search me, if we go back to my imaginary scenario with Maxine doing the cleaning, in the context of this passage, if she were to say, Steve, how is my cleaning? How am I doing? What she would be saying is, Steve, get out your phone, put the torchlight on, and actually get down on your hands and knees and inspect the carpet. Go right into the corners, check everywhere, see if there's any place that is left grubby and dirty. And so the request of David in his prayer here in Psalm 139 is for God to shine his light, the brilliance of his holiness into the inner recesses of his soul and expose whatever is in there. That's quite a powerful, scary prayer to pray especially if we consider the context in which David prayed this prayer. David at the time was struggling with personal hatred for injustice, if you look at verses 19 to 22. He was contending with, contending with God for, for action to be taken upon the wicked. And what David was asking God is this, is my hatred too strong? Have I overstepped these boundaries? He knew this was something that only God could decide. It's even more interesting that we know this also comes at a time in David's life when he's caught up in amazement and awe about God. All this happens, he feels close to God. If we go back to the start of this psalm, David begins by, in verse 1, by talking about the greatness and grandeur of God. You know everything. He says, you know when I sit, when I rise, my thoughts, my ways, my words, you know everything about me. And a bit later, he prays to God, doesn't he, in verses 7 to 8. Where can I go from your spirit? Where can I flee from your presence? I go to the heavens, you are there. If I go down to the depths, you are there. If I rise on the wings or settle on the far side, you are there also. And so David's convinced. Nothing can be hid from God. So he humbles himself before God in prayer, acknowledges the obvious and prays, Lord, search me. Why? Because David knows that unless God, he asks God to look into the inner recesses of his life, that he won't be right with God. The prayer continues. And know my heart, test me and know my anxious thoughts. See if there is any offensive way in me. That message, the message translates that verse in this way. Cross-examine me and test me. 
get a clear picture of what I am about. You see, David isn't asking God just to judge his outward actions, but he wants him to go further than that. He wants him to look at the things that he thinks about. He wants to look, God to look at the images that, uh, that are in his mind, that pass through his mind, that are burned into his memory. He wants God to grill every part of him. Because David wants to be clear that what drives his life is not self, but God. And he desires to follow and serve God. And so he says to God, examine me. Confirm that this is the case. Finally, the closing words of the prayer say, and lead me in the way everlasting. Because David knows that the reason that he is able to walk with God is that he needs to be as close to God as he can. And the result of exposing his sin is that David will be a man who walks by the side of the everlasting God, sinning less and loving more. Do you know that's why this is such a life-changing prayer? Because we can pray nice prayers to God, to bless us and pour out his Holy Spirit on our lives. But actually, those prayers can only be answered when we deal with all the muck and the dirt that is in our lives. Because God cannot fill sinful vessels. Imagine a mug of drinking chocolate. You've enjoyed the drink, but you leave the cup on the kitchen sideboard unwashed. What happens to it? That chocolate inside all goes hard and horrible, doesn't it? It just fills up that cup. The cup becomes stained and horrid. What happens if I fancy a glass of cold water or a cup of cold water? And I pick up that cup without washing it and I put the water into it. What happens? That water becomes dirty, doesn't it? It doesn't become desirable to drink. God cannot fill dirty vessels. No matter how much we may plead with God to fill us with his Holy Spirit, no matter what we may say, God can't fill dirty vessels. So if we want God to bless us, we need to be like David, engaging with this prayer so that God may cleanse us and fill us. So this is, in Psalm 139, a dangerous prayer. Because as you pray, God may reveal something in your life that you might have to deal with. But I also have to say to you that if God reveals something in your life that is unpure and unholy, then he's also give you, going to give you his grace to deal with it. Because where there's grace, there's also redemption. Let me ask Noah to explain that to you perhaps a little bit better. He sent me this video this week. It's a Bible verse that he's been learning in school off by heart this week. So Noah, share your Bible verse with us if you would. The Lord is kind and fair. Yes, our God is very kind. Psalms 116 verse 5. So how do I know that where there's grace? There is redemption, because God is kind and fair. It's in his nature to be fair with us. And so if you want to know more of God, then use this prayer and allow God to reveal and cleanse you from all that stops you, enjoying the blessing of his presence in your life. In a moment, we're going to pray together. But as we do, we're going to use a song Purify my heart. I use this song as a prayer as we come before God.
Let's just pause for a moment and as we've heard that song, let's just ask God what in our lives need to be cleansed and purified. What do we need to ask forgiveness for? What are the things that get in the way between us fully knowing the presence of God with us? So Father God, by your Spirit, reveal those things to us now. Deep into our hearts and souls, we pray. And now by your Spirit, cleanse those areas. Restore us back into relationship with you, we pray. But Lord, as we pray for ourselves, we pray for others today. We pray for those who are serving on frontline, particularly our NHS staff. As this pandemic increases, Lord, be near to them and keep them safe, we pray. We pray for our society, we pray for our town, our nation. We pray for the infection rate to decrease. We pray that this lockdown will be successful. Father, we pray for people to obey the lockdown. And Father, we pray for those who are struggling at this moment. Give them your peace and the knowledge of your presence. For we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you for watching with us today. Uh, Advent starts next Sunday and we're going to be starting a new series uh, entitled, entitled Simple Christmas. Next Sunday afternoon is our annual memorial service. It's going to be online. If you want to email names into us, then please do so, and they will be read out in the service. You can use the email address connect at cpbc.co.uk. We'll also be putting baubles in memory of those who you email in on our tree of remembrance, which will be up throughout the whole of Advent to remind us of those who we love and have lost, that they are not forgotten. But we're going to close this morning as we say the words of our motto text for this year. So will you say with me? May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace as you trust in him, so that you may overflow with hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen.